Welcome to my studio. Today I will be using this proportional divider to draw the chickadee on my UART sanded paper. I have placed a corner mark on my UART paper where I want to place the top and side of the bird's head in this position. I am going to measure the bird on my tablet and transfer it to my paper. I will be taking key measurements on my tablet and then transfer them to my UART sanded paper. Once I have placed some of the critical measurements on my paper, I will be able to draw the shapes with uh, very good accuracy. I am using a light gray pastel pencil for drawing the outlines of the bird. I prefer to use the pastel uh, pencil rather than a real pencil because it will erase very easily or blend into the pastel without having to erase. Once I've added a few more anchor points to my paper, I can continue to freehand the rest of the shapes within the bird. There are other methods you can use to transfer your image to your paper. Many people use the grid method to make accurate drawings from photos. With this method, you can draw a grid of squares on your reference photo, then draw the same grid on your paper. It can help you learn to see the subject better and learn to draw more accurately. If you wish to enlarge a drawing from a photo, you would need to draw larger grid squares on your art paper or if you would like to learn how to enlarge a photo you can visit my tutorial on how to use a proportional divider to enlarge a photo and I will add the link to this video up above. The grid method can be a very time-consuming technique, so I try to take shortcuts wherever I can. So you can see that taking measurements from my tablet is working out very well for me, and I will proceed to take key measurements throughout the entire uh, picture. I hope you find this little technique helpful. I'm going to erase some of the marks I've made on my art paper. and Then I'm going to step back and check my accuracy. Once I establish the size I want on my tablet, I can still slide the screen around without losing the proportion I established. So now I think I would like to advance ahead a little bit as I am almost finished with the drawing before we move on to adding our color pastels. Once I finish these final details, then I will show you the colors I've chosen to paint the chickadee and the background. Because the bird is a small scale, I will primarily use my uh, pastel pencils to create the shading in the bird. This chickadee is called a chestnut back chickadee and I've chosen colors to complement the bird's feathers using shades of brown, copper, and the chestnut color uh, pastels. 
I will also be using light shades of orange for the highlights in the bird's feathers. I am going to begin with the light blue for the sky that surrounds the chickadee. I need to block in this area before I begin working on the chickadee. I'm going to use a small sponge applicator to blend the color into the paper. Each time I finish a project, I wash my sponge applicators. So even if they appear stained, they are still clean to use. I will continue to add a couple more layers of blue before I begin outlining the uh, body of the chickadee. I'm going to begin uh, drawing an outline around the chickadee's head with a dark brown using my pastel pencils. I will block in this brown in his head and neck area and I'll be using a, a paper blending stump to push the color into the paper. These blending stumps work very nicely for the first layer of color that you're applying to an area. I will go ahead and draw in the shape of the chickadee's eye and then I will add some of the very dark brown color around his eye and neckline. I am only trying to define some of the darker areas and darker values in his uh, face and body, but I won't be adding any detail until all the colors in his body have been blocked in. The UART sanded paper will hold several layers of color so I can continue to reapply and blend color um, over and over uh, throughout the drawing. I'll speed this video up a little bit while I block in all the colors in the chickadee's body. Now that I have applied a base layer of colors to the entire chickadee, I can begin uh, darkening some of the darkest values and adding some detail to the bird's feathers. It takes several layers of application of color and blending to establish some texture and fullness to the bird's body. 
the chickadee has a very dark brown crest and neck area. So I will use a combination of a chestnut brown, some black, dark brown, and even some dark and light copper color to uh, create his cap and neck area. I'll also use a little bit of light orange for some highlights in his feathers. I don't plan to finish all the final details at this time, but I just want to ensure that I have layered enough color to bring out the true appearance and texture of the bird's feathers. I think you can see how the shading is now contouring his face very nicely. To give some shadow to the white area of his feathers, I used a soft violet to create some of the shading. The chickadee has a beautiful chestnut color back and I'd like to begin developing some of the shading in his back area. I've switched to a very dark burnt umber color to create the dark chestnut color in his back feathers. I'll blend this a little bit and you can already begin to see some of that fullness in the back feathers. And the light orange created some very nice highlights in his shoulder feathers. I'm going to begin developing the shading between the feathers in his body and in his wings and focus on the darkest values first. And then I'll add a little bit of white to define some of the small fluffy feathers. I have gone in and drawn the dark lines to separate each of the feathers in the bird's wings and tail area. I will continue to shade and blend the colors in his wings using my rubber tipped blending stump which works really nicely to blend the sometimes jagged edges created by the pastel pencils. I will blend some more brown into his feathers and try to define the separation between the feathers a little more and then I will blend with my rubber tip blending stick and 
This will create a very smooth appearance in his feathers. So this will complete part one of painting a woodland chickadee. So please join me next time for part two as I complete the chickadee and the woodland trees. Thank you for watching.